Got to worry about your training. Make sure you're ready. You can be a good fighter, but you've got to have a lot of balls to do bare knuckle. I'm not going to retire. The only time when I'm going to retire is when I'm dead. OK, break, 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 break. You're here for a fight, Jacko. Look up, lads. Let's go. Whoa. Bare knuckle boxing spans back to the 17th century. It is now a very fast growing sport within the UK, attracting men from all walks of life. Anyone who has got the guts, determination and honour can now step up to the mark. Welcome to the UK's very own Fight Club. Once dubbed one of the most violent cities in Europe, Glasgow, notorious for its gangland murders and drugs, still holds on to its dark past. So it's no wonder that its streets turn out such hard men. Just from the back of this building here was one of the first clubs I worked in. The old venue it was called. But yeah, dive, so it was it and it's and it's day it was. Started in here at the age of 17, so I did. <laughs> but yeah, shit hole in its day, so it was. I just too much trouble, too much hassle, know what I mean? But I mean, we've just been 17, that just knew the job, know what I mean? Just fell out of school, had to get a job, had to work. This is my first place I came to. This is where I go actually the balls to fight back. In school, I never fought back. But this place, I mean, there's a lot of, lot of good and bad memories here, know what I mean? There were fights out here every weekend. Well, nearly enough every weekend. And at the time, you had, the, you had your knives and all, just chaos, know what I mean? 17 year old scene, all that. It was a bit, know what I mean? It opened my eyes to a lot of things in life, know what I mean? Growing up. Being a doorman. Having done the doors since he was 17, Andy still holds a respected presence in Glasgow. Well, the area's got its downfalls, but it's like every area, you know what I mean? Every area you go into these days, it's all, they've got their, their stabbing to everywhere else, you know what I mean? You just go to pub, so. It's the worst place I've ever thought was a renting in the pubs. So you've got all sorts of about you, Tom Wars, you don't know who's, who you're fighting, you end up at a pub brawl, so. I think I'd put that down as my worst place to fight in a pub. I go into Bernacle fighting just for the fact is, well, I mean, I done a lot of like, fighting in the street, a lot of fighting on the doors, stuff like that, the doors, you always did, the old school kind of thing, you know what I mean? I never fought a lot in school, I was more, I was more in school keeping myself myself. To be honest with you, I was building school, so it didn't really help. This is why I turned out by half just now, <laughs> to be honest. And then I go into MMA, which I mean, I like to, the spar and stuff like that. It's just my ground game I couldn't get, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm more a stand fighter. So, you know what I mean, with me watching the bare knuckle, I was like, well, I'm going to give myself a chance of this, because at least I was getting taken down in Brazil Jiu-Jitsu. That kind of ruined my, you know what I mean, my MMA kind of career. On and off, now, I've been doing bare knuckle now for what, just, just under three years now. Performance-wise, he's, he's getting better. He's training, he's training pretty hard and consistent. Um, once we refined his technique and stuff like that, powers, been a byproduct of that. It's hitting harder than ever now. Good, good. Come back out and go to your jab. Take one, push. Right hand. Book, book. Ten. Well, physical force, I mean, it's all about, I mean, like, see if you have a top of cardio and your fitness stamina. Physical force, I mean, you're in there. You've really got to make sure you knock your opponent out. When you're putting that punch on his jaw, I mean, well, that's what I'm going for. I'm going for to knock the guy clean out. That's what I'm going to do anyhow. So, it's cardio, fitness, and physical force. I'll go with physical force. James, if you think you should fight me, Bernacle, right? Do you think you should beat me if you want to fight me, Bernacle? Easy. Mm, that's shite, mate. That's crap. <laughs> you're meant to be my coach, for fuck's sake. You're putting me down here. <laughs> My family and friends think about like bare knuckle. They were worried about the MMA, and they're, they're kind of worried about bare knuckle because I just not mean get hurt, but you get hurt in any sport. No, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're pff, Olympic weightlifter or whatever you're doing. You get hurt in anything. Just I know it's a bit more force of getting impacts off it, but they're no they're no for it. Put it that. No, I mean that way. But we met um, when Andy worked in Global Video, and I worked in the chip shop and the local shopping centre. If there's no fighting, he's Buddy, happy, he's like on me, but if he's fighting, he gets intense and he's in another world, so you just kind of talk to him. I don't get worried because I know he can handle himself, um, but I know he can handle himself, but I always think about his injuries and how long he could be if he got a bad injury, but he's never had a major injury, maybe black eye or whatever, but 
Nothing major. I'd like to like them to get up all together. I'm too I'm, I'm too worried about them maybe getting the wrong punch to the head. You know, this is what I'm worried about. You hear that much about fighting and the damage it can get done. No, you're laughing, but it's true, Andy. No, it's true. <laughs> I mean, that, f that first fight you had there at Brayhead, well, I just felt like running, running, hitting the guy with my walking stick. <laughs> Wait, did you say Andy was mummy's boy? <laughs> Aye. <laughs> he is. <laughs> so his dad keeps telling me. <laughs> he's a really good neighbour and he's really kind. He fixed my arms over and... Yeah, he helps me with my hoover and all that. So he does. Andy's a good boy, you know what I mean? I'm sure if he needed his help, he'd get you. Right. He said to me a couple of times, if he's anybody at my door, then he would come down. <laughs> he's a nice man. I remember my neighbours in the close, if there's like a bit of hassle or something, or somebody comes in the close, they Facebook me saying, Andy, do you know who that is at the close or not? Then I make sure everything's all right, make sure they're no kicking the door or tight you in the close, you know what I mean? So it helps that way, you know what I mean? We're all here to help each other, it's a good tight close, good network there, close, you know what I mean? This is what's in primary school, must have about seven or eight. And this was Andy, a group of friends, about seven or eight, the same age. Which one's Andy? The one in the white top. Do you think he's better looking now or back then? <laughs> better looking now. <laughs> 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 That'll be right. <laughs> You'd never believe how soft he is compared to him in Titan. That's right. And he washes, cooks, sews, irons, cleans. <laughs> you know what he does it. Gets me iron or dresses and that when she can't do. That's how soft it is. The worst injury that I've ever had in a fight um, goes back when I was 18 years old and I was fighting three people and I got stabbed in the back of a carving knife. Well, I've had, um, you could say, unconventional fighting. Uh, I've been around 10 years in Broadmoor. Broadmoor, a high security psychiatric hospital, is one place on earth you do not want to end up. Over the years, it's been home to some of the UK's most notorious figures like Peter Sutcliffe, Charles Bronson and Ronnie Cray, to name a few. Once the gates of Broadmoor close, it's very easy for society to forget all about you. When I was in Broadmoor, obviously I've seen a hell of a lot and I got involved in a hell of a lot. To do with riot, hostage taking, fought with staff, fought with other patients. Uh, knuckle duster that my stepchildren bought me, made by, uh, as you say, a well-known jeweller. The 10 represents 10 years and uh, comes everywhere with me. My whole life hasn't been completely uh, um, all physical fitness. Like, you know, I've dabbled in drugs when I was younger, you know, like quite heavy drugs. And so, you know, I wasn't very fit then. You know, crime doesn't pay these days. Um, but physical fitness gives you a sense of well-being as well. All right? How you doing, Paul? You right? Yeah, you're not bad, mate. Cheers. And when you come out of that gym and you're feeling that adrenaline and the endorphins pumping through you, that's a better feeling than any drug. When I first knew I was going to be start, when I was going to be fighting, it was more um, an exhilarated feeling. You know, it was like um, like winning the lottery. I like to know who I'm fighting so I can um, study them, study my opponent. I like to know more in advance than not just on the day. Um, I mean, at the moment, I've got my opponent by my bedside in you know, a picture. So I go to sleep with him, looking at him, and I wake up looking at him. And that's training my mind for my opponent. 
No, it's a brawly once, it's a brawly will get. That's the name of the game now, isn't it? Hurting your opponent. Coming up, Andy and Paul finally come face to face. Will Andy be able to defeat the hard man from Broadmoor? But one more thing to say for the block. This is where you look like when I'm finished with you, sonny boy. Training is over, the gloves are off, and the knuckles are bare. The day has come when Andy and Paul finally meet. Will Andy be able to stand the built-up anger of Paul the Gorilla Knight? I can't worry about who I'm fighting because it might put doubts in me. I don't even think about it to be honest, so I, I mean, I'd rather just get in about it. Just two or two's in front of each other, let's go for it. Ready then, guys? Today, in the bare knuckle record, I've had 3 0, but after I fight this boy, it's going to be 4 0, so it doesn't really matter. That's why I'm looking at it. I've been thinking about this one for quite a long time now. I'm on my way to, uh, to my fight with Andy Hillhouse. I've been up since 5. Nice, decent breakfast. Good to go. I was ready to go since last week. <laughs> Look, I've been ready to go since last week, they bought it. This fight now, the way I'm feeling at the moment, probably take us about another two hours to get there. And I'm starting to get into the zone of the fight. I've got a good plan, mate. I've got a good plan. <laughs> <laughs> you plan of action, I've been prepared since last week. I'm feeling confident. It don't, as I say, it don't matter about the win. If it's a win, it's a win. I'm just going to give it all I can to the best of my ability. If it bleeds, we can kill it. <laughs> <laughs> After telephone calls and the secret destination set, the fighters finally come face to face for the very first time. Hello, Paul. All right, mate. Yeah, yourself? Not bad. Good to see you. Not bad. Looking well. When I'm walking in, if it's a ring, a barn, I stick a hay in the ground. Doesn't matter, it's, I mean, I've got tunnel vision. At the end of that tunnel, it's my goals. I'm taking them right out. I'm going to knock this boy right out when he likes it or not. You better be able to hit me hard because I'm going to come banging. Things that will be going through my mind will be his size and how I'm going to play the game. And that's probably going to be body shots straight off. When I'm in face to face my opponent, all, I th all I'm thinking about is just going through him. If he's a brick wall, hit hard, go through him. That's all. That's if you get two stunned together. At the end of the day, I'm going to be all gone. And he's going to see it in my eyes. He's either going to come running out, as a, a, a cliche, guns blazing, and I'll go straight in here with my backhand, and then that'll stop him in his tracks. When we're face to face, the standoff, as soon as that ref shouts fight, he's going to know because I'm going to hit him like a brick wall. I'm going to come through him like a steam train hitting a brick wall. That's what I'm going to do. And it's going to hit him hard. That's all I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about that right now, John, so talking to you. Considering I fought like a 10 man team with shields and helmets, I don't really give a shit. Well, lads, you can just come here. We're going to keep it nice and clean. Okay, no biting, no head, head button, no elbows, no nothing. Okay, no knees, no kicks, just boxing. Okay, it's three times two minute rounds. When I say break, break. Okay, especially if one of you is getting against right. the wall, it's gonna, I'll say break so you can come back over in the center. Okay, the very last thought was through my head is to destroy the boy in front of me, to kill him. My, my last thought when the ref says fight will be kill shot. Okay, lads, shake hands. Okay, go back to your corners there. 
You ready to fight? Yeah. Paul, you ready to fight? Okay, knuckles up. Let's go. Okay, break, lads, break, break, break. Okay, let's go, knuckles up. Whoa, whoa, break, break. You okay there? You slipped, yeah? Okay. Lads, let's go, knuckle up. Okay, break, 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 break. Okay, back over here in the center. Okay, knuckles up. Knuckles up, come on, let's go. Whoa. Okay, stand back, stand back, you're okay. Get in your corner there. Get in your corner there, Andy. Breathing for the nose, out through the mouth. You okay? All right. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna give you a 15 second count, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. Time. Good. Give me a gum show. Can go for it. Brilliant, mate. Mm -hmm. Even for your nose out, for your mouth, for your lungs up. Okay, you're getting a bit of a shiner there. Yeah. Yeah, you got any Vaseline on? No. No. You boys got any Vaz? Huh? You got any Vaseline? Oh. No. No, neither are we. Never mind. Okay. Even for your nose out, for your mouth. Yeah, okay, your eyes coming up now. That's going to go. So am I, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, John, can you come have a look? Check his eye, will you? Yeah, I'm all right. He had that there gone um, about a week and a half ago in a fight. It's the same eye. Just give it a check. Mm -hmm. he, he gets caught in that there. Uh, yeah. Just do us a favour, mate. Right? A bit blinding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand still, right? Right? Just do us a favour and follow the light, all right? You Andy? You fell on, on your elbow, you right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's sure, but I'll find it that later. I'm a It's got spoiled, eh? <laughs> Come on, man. If you can't see. Well, you know. What do you want, Paul? You got this oh, your, it's, look, it's your, it's your I can't call. fucking see outside. Nah, nah. If you can't see. I've got like a blurred yeah. bit. I, I, think going it's, I think we should call it. Yeah. Call it a day. Call it that. If you, you can. can. Paul, the spread, mate. Yeah. The spread. Yeah, I've got a box for it, my Lovely, nice one. I caught his eye last week by Clifford. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Well done, lads. That's a spectacular you bit. You're fucking dead, bro. Okay, lads, can, we, can I have you here, please? I'm disappointed with this one. No, nah, Paul, don't be disappointed. No. Nah. Yeah, I'm sorry, no disrespect to you, my friend. Like no disrespect for you. No worries, mate. I'm just okay. disappointed, disappointed with this one. Paul can't continue because of a bad eye. The winner is Andy No Fear Hillhouse. Well done. Lads, big respect to both of you. Yeah. No, I'm chiddle, man. Thank you, thank you, Paul. When I've knocked him down, I've won the fight. I just feel awesome, I feel brilliant. I just feel that I could go on probably another three or four rounds. You know what I mean? Paul's tactics to use body shots on Andy didn't go to plan, as the sheer force of Andy's punches knocks Paul to the ground. Whoa! Six, seven, eight. Come back again straight away. Uh, a bit disappointed. I mean, me and my head, this is my second BKB fight. Uh, I learned a lot, just considering I only fought last two weeks ago. Um, just got clocked in the same eye again, really. 
as you see, I, I wasn't knocked out or, or semi-conscious even. But when you can't see in your own vision, then you know that, you know, it's no winning, no losing. It's just a case of like an unlucky hit for me and a good hit for him. I was also looking at the size of his arms, they're like the size of my calves, so I'm going to expect if you get caught with clock by one of them, you're going to fucking fall to the, get to the floor. But, and he's a safe bloke, he's a nice geezer. I still think that, and he's still a friend in my books. Whether I am in his, I don't know. Hey, Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good on you, mate. Good respect to you, mate. What makes you a bare knuckle fighter is as long as you've got respect and heart and you know what I mean, at the end of it, you should shake your horn and show back your attitude then. That's what makes a good fighter, I think. Good bare knuckle fighter. I would like I would like to see bare knuckle, yeah, I would like it highlighted a lot more, I would like it more, more in there, more and so people know about it instead of just thinking it's like two gypsies getting together and fighting. It's no that at all. It's a lot different, it's you not know I mean it's a lot of respect. A lot of people they're honoured to the guys today, so you go walk in there a gentleman, you have your, you do your, you, you, you know, you do your business and you walk back out a gentleman, whether you like the geezer or not.